Hormonal therapy is essential for estrogen sensitive breast cancers. We will teach you all about it. If you've been diagnosed with breast cancer, there's an 80% chance that your tumor is estrogen receptor positive. This means that you will benefit from estrogen blocking medications, usually pills, for up to 10 years. But when I mention benefit, I mean improve your survival, decrease the chance of your cancer coming back, in essence, lessening the chance that you could die of your estrogen receptor positive cancer. So having an estrogen receptor positive cancer does not entirely mean that you will not need or benefit from chemotherapy in addition to hormonal therapy. And a leap forward in breast cancer care over the last decade are genomic assays, which help us better determine whether you'll need hormonal therapy alone or hormonal therapy and chemotherapy. In this lesson, I'm going to tell you exactly what hormonal therapy is and the different medications that we use. I'm going to go over what tumor receptor patterns suggest hormonal therapy. I'm going to go over the benefits and the side effects of hormonal therapy. And I'm also going to go over genomic assays and how they can play a role in your care. So let's get started. So what is hormonal therapy for estrogen receptor positive breast cancers? These estrogen blocking or anti-estrogen medications, usually pills, but there are some other forms, are incredibly effective at killing cancer cells or suppressing cancer cells from growing. There generally are two types that are used the most. One is called tamoxifen, and there's some other variations of that. And we've been using this drug to great effect for the last 30 or 40 years. There's another class of drugs called aromatase inhibitors, and there are three or four versions of those. They're generally used more for postmenopausal women. They work almost as effectively, and they have some different advantages and disadvantages. The way to think about hormonal therapy for estrogen receptor positive cancer, you gotta think about the estrogen receptor, let me tell you. So let's pretend we have a one cancer cell and it has estrogen receptors on it. It's estrogen receptor positive. If it's negative, it doesn't have any of these growth light switches, so to speak. And when these estrogen receptors interact with estrogen, it turns the growth switch to on, telling that cell and encouraging that cell to grow, or shall we say divide. Two, one to two, two to four, tumor grows, it spreads. It's a problem. These medications, hormonal therapy, do one of several things, but they can take that growth switch and turn it from on to off, sometimes killing the cell or keeping it from growing. Or there are other situations where it can deprive the tumor of estrogen, and so the on switch is always in the off position. It's much more complicated than that. But the threat to your life is that when you walked into your surgeon's office, before you've had surgery and treated your cancer, there might have been cancer cells elsewhere in your body, your bone, your brain, your liver, that over time, although we remove the cancer, can grow and threaten your life. That's what people die of, of breast cancer. So hormonal therapy is so effective because it can interact with any of those cells that may or may not be there for up to 10 years, suppressing them or killing them, and increasing the chance of us curing your cancer. There are many different other, more new hormonal therapies that work in even more sophisticated ways beyond the scope of this discussion. But let me tell you, your medical oncologist is such a key part of your breast cancer team. Medical oncologists prescribe hormonal therapy, prescribe the more sophisticated drugs, and your medical oncologist can help determine whether or not you will benefit from chemotherapy in addition to hormonal therapy. Next, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about tumor receptors. So what are breast tumor receptors that suggest I might need hormonal therapy? Well, your tumor receptors are key information in guiding you and your doctors, especially your medical oncologists, determining how we treat your cancer 
with medication. So it's one of many factors, including the size of your tumor, whether you have cancer in your lymph nodes or elsewhere in your body. But let me walk you through some principles. If you have an estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, invariably you are going to benefit from hormonal therapy. Now the three different receptors are estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, which plays a much smaller role, and HER2 receptors, which plays a very strong role for suggesting chemotherapy and immunotherapy. So let me walk you through this. You can take our tumor receptor video lesson at the Breast Cancer School for Patients to learn more about tumor receptors and dive more into the details. But estrogen receptor positive tumor benefits from hormonal therapy. If you're estrogen receptor positive and your progesterone receptor, which is sort of a hormone therapy type of receptor, if it's positive or negative, you're still going to benefit from hormonal therapy. HER2, and it's only positive in 20% of patients, suggests that you will benefit from chemotherapy and targeted immunotherapy. But even if you have a HER2 positive breast cancer and it's estrogen receptor positive, you do chemotherapy, targeted immunotherapy, and then you take hormonal therapy for 10 years. So all of this is quite complicated. The take home message is know what your receptors are, know if your estrogen receptor positive or negative, know if you're HER2 positive or negative. Engage your breast surgeon early on about whether they think that you might need chemotherapy already even before surgery. And engage your medical oncologist when you see them about the benefits of hormonal therapy and possibly chemotherapy if it's needed. So what are the benefits and side effects of hormonal therapy? Well, the benefits are tremendous. It's an incredible cancer treating medication and therapy for hormone positive cancer. And if you think about it, if you're taking these medications for five to 10 years, they're protecting you. They're suppressing any cancer cells from growing back and recurring. One way to think about hormonal therapy is that in many different situations, it lessens the chance of cancer growing back by about 50%. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have a hormonally positive breast cancer, and that's all you need, but you don't take the medication. And the chance of the cancer is of coming back and threatening your life is 20% without it. If you take these medications, it can cut in half that number 20 to 10% of the chance of your cancer coming back and threatening your life. So in general, it lessens the chance of things recurring and lessens the chance of cancer threatening you versus not taking it by half, which is a powerful effect in cancer. I wanna cover the side effects. And if you cover everyone, about 30 or 40% of people really have little to no side effects at all from these hormonal therapy. But let me cover the two, tamoxifen, aromatase inhibitors, and those are the two main classes. Let's cover tamoxifen first. You can have hot flashes with tamoxifen. One of the positive side effects is that it tends to strengthen your bones or offset some of the normal bone loss. So that's a positive side effect. It can increase the chance of you developing a rare cancer called endometrial or uterine cancer slightly. So we follow you for that. And also, as you get older, the chance of developing blood clots increases while you're on tamoxifen. And you can't take it if you're trying to have children. Let's pivot to aromatase inhibitors, which we use for postmenopausal women. You can get hot flashes. It also can cause muscle aches and joint pains in some women. And we have a number of remedies that you and your medical oncologist, if you have those symptoms, can work to remedy them. It can also tend to increase bone loss as you age, and we have some countermeasures and medications to offset that. So, in the end, benefits, risks. Benefits are tremendous from a cancer perspective. Side effects are there and are not insignificant, but the benefits are 
dramatically strong. The side effects are generally there, but tolerable. And so that's why we strongly recommend taking hormonal therapy for an estrogen receptor positive cancer. Next, I'm gonna tell you about genomic assays. What are genomic assays in breast cancer? Well, we already know if you're estrogen receptor positive, you're gonna benefit from hormonal therapy. But there's still, in many situations, some unanswered questions that we might want more information. We might otherwise think you'll just benefit from hormonal therapy, but you might have a higher risk cancer we don't know about and might benefit from chemotherapy in addition to it. There's some situations where, how long do you need to take hormonal therapy? Five years? What's the benefit from five years to 10 years? Is it significant? What if I'm having side effects from five years of hormonal therapy and I really don't want to take year six, seven, eight, nine, and 10? How much benefit versus how much side effects? All of these questions are evolving and we're finding better ways to answer them. Let me tell you about genomic assays. Genomic assays look inside your cancer cells a little deeper than receptors and other aspects of it to tell us whether or not your cancer is more aggressive than we otherwise would think or less aggressive or as aggressive as we otherwise think. And the concept here is sometimes we can look into your cancer cells with these advanced sophisticated tests and determine that someone that we otherwise would give hormonal therapy is someone that really has a high risk tumor and will really benefit from chemotherapy in addition to hormonal therapy that otherwise wouldn't get it and otherwise have a higher chance of dying from their cancer. So the two S assays that are the most used, the predominant one in the United States is an Oncotype DX assay. There's also another assay called a Mamoprim. And you can go and take our free video genomic assay lesson at the Breast Cancer School for patients to learn more. But most of these assays apply to hormonally sensitive breast cancers. So research this more, engage your doctors to determine whether or not in your unique situation you might benefit from a genomic assay. Most breast cancers are estrogen receptor positive and really benefit from hormonal therapy to lessen cancer recurrence and quite simply reduce the chance of you dying of a estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. Hormonal therapy is today usually recommended for 10 years and generally well tolerated, but it is essential that you work closely with your medical oncologist to navigate any side effects you may experience without altogether stopping hormonal therapy. Chemotherapy is sometimes needed in addition to hormonal therapy. And in some, genomic assays can play a role in this difficult decision. To learn more about hormonal therapy for breast cancer, visit the Breast Cancer School for Patients, where we teach you everything you need to know. We're here to help you get the best possible breast cancer care in your community. Register on our website to get our list of questions to prepare you for your next doctor visit.